friends, welcome to Ralph's Rising. My name is Katie and today I'm sharing with you all the meals that we made from our pantry this week. We are knee deep in the Three Rivers Challenge and that is a pantry challenge where we're trying to stay out of the grocery store and we want to use up all those odds and ends in our pantry and freezer that need to be used up. It could be foods that are nearly about to expire, it could be produce that we canned, up over last season and we need to clear out those jars in preparation for this next season's harvest. Uh, just finding creative ways to use up some foods that are taking up space. So I know a lot of folks are really concerned about these times and maintaining a certain level of food storage. And don't worry, I plan to restock after this pantry challenge. This is mostly just to cycle through some of the things that may be expiring. It's also for me to go through and take inventory of what we have and to see if there's any gaps that need to be filled as well to take inventory. And I'm going to tell you something. I thought I was all out of rolled oats and I found a three gallon bucket or maybe it's a two gallon bucket. I found a smaller bucket of rolled oats stashed way back in my pantry. So I've got plenty of rolled oats to get us through this pantry challenge. I also recently had just gotten some quick oats but our family likes the texture of rolled oats much better for oatmeal. And I got the quick oats to make energy balls and things like that. So I am so glad that I found that bucket of rolled oats. We will be able to eat on that for a while. So that's just one of the examples of why we do this pantry challenge. We need to make sure we don't have bugs in our food. We need to make sure we're using up expired items and we need to make sure that we are determining if there's foods that our family doesn't really like or use that much. Let's just go ahead and use those up and get them out of the pantry. So today I made these beautiful quiche right here and I have a secret ingredient in them. So there's some ingredients in our home that we're running out of and I've had to tap into some of the freeze dried things. So all of that is going to be in this video as well as all the meals that I made from scratch this week for this pantry challenge and how I fed my family. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below what's your favorite meal. Give it a thumbs up. We're going to jump right into this video and start cooking. <laughs> All right, if you need an easy way to get some vegetables into your breakfast, this is what we're doing today. So I've got some rice right here. I've got some fine shredded zucchini and we've got some eggs, salt, pepper, butter. This is what, and some fresh bread. Y'all know me, I'm always baking fresh bread. About every other day or every three days I bake bread. Um, so if I don't always share that with you, just know that we're baking some bread here. So I'm gonna mix all this together with some salt and pepper and serve up my kids breakfast. It's gonna be delicious. This is a great way to stretch eggs if you're low on eggs, if your chickens aren't laying eggs, if the eggs are too expensive. So this is seven eggs. Normally I would make a whole 12 or 14 eggs, normally closer to 14 eggs to feed my five kids. Uh, Cause that's just how much they can eat. Well, I don't have 14 eggs in fact, that's the last bit of eggs that I have for this pantry challenge before we switch over to freeze dried eggs that I preserved over the summertime. So this is one way I can stretch and then maybe tomorrow I could make muffins or like baked goods or whatever, but come on now, we like, we like our scrambled eggs for breakfast. So we've got our freeze dried eggs we'll be using in this pantry challenge. So this is a way that I can stretch my eggs for the kids. It's one zucchini about two to three cups of rice and seven eggs and it's a belly filler. All right, there we go. Breakfast and we also have bread and stewed apples, um, and whatever else the kids want. So I'm not gonna show you plated up, but there you go. Zucchini fried egg rice. All right, and for a snack, just butter bread. We're just giving the kids some of this really good, we get this butter, Rumiano organic sea salted butter. I get a variety of, yeah, that's yours. I get a variety of butters, but this is our favorite. All right, we've been making a lot of potatoes, but I'm also gonna cook up some deer burger and make it like taco deer burger. And then we're using Redmond's Real Salt, the organic seasoned salt. You can find this link down below in my video's description. Redmond's Real Salt, you can get anything with my code from their website and you're gonna get the best deal on the internet. But we're gonna cook this up and I'll show you what it looks like at the end, but that's what we've seasoned it with. So I'm just browning these. 
We're gonna brown up some deer meat and the kids can have some deer meat over top of their potatoes. They've had tons of fruits and vegetables throughout the day. So I don't worry about at dinner time cooking vegetables, but they get plenty of that throughout the day. So it's gonna be a well-balanced meal regardless. All right, we're running low on some ingredients like onion powder. I'm out of onion powder, but I have freeze dried onions and I have a bunch of them. So I can chop these up really fine and crush them up and end up with enough of an onion powder to put into my meat. So I'm just gonna keep on chopping these up, but it is turning onion powder. I just can't grind it because it picks up moisture in the air because I don't use any kind of stuff in it. I can't pre-grind it because then it turns into like a solid little rock of onion stuff. So I have to kind of powder it as, as needed because I don't add anything to it to keep it dry or separate like they do in the mass manufacturing process. We made taco meat with a bunch of seasoning, smoked paprika, regular paprika, onions, garlic powder. What else we use? Salt and um, some steak seasoning I had, I thought would be good in it too. And then put that on top of the fried potatoes, topped with cheese. That's dinner. There's the finished potatoes. If you pre bake your potatoes or put them in your instant pot, it makes it really easy to make potatoes. And then that's our taco meat. Okay, this soup was in last week's meal prep. Uh, but I made it two days ago and I added ricotta cheese to it and some macaroni noodles and it's like a lasagna vegetable-esque soup. Super tasty. Kids have eaten almost all of it. It was a full pot. I had to add more water to it to boil the noodles and add more cheese and more seasoning to bulk it up to make it stretch between five kids, but it stretched between them all. This pancake mix has been really good. You just add water then I can have a quick little lunch or breakfast or snack when I make the family something else I'm gonna cover it with some wild plums we're gonna make some gluten-free pumpkin muffins and I'm going to use these dehydrated eggs. One. Two tablespoons of freeze dried egg equals one egg. So then you add four tablespoons of water and that's going to give you two whole eggs. I need to double that for this recipe. Make sure you do that because I definitely glitched and did not add enough eggs, but it did not affect the recipe at all. It turned out great. I don't have any brown sugar, so we're just gonna add some blackstrap molasses to our regular sugar and mix that up. A little blackstrap molasses is good because it's high in iron content and it's great for pregnant women and for the kids and everybody to get lots of iron. We got 4.7 milligrams of iron per tablespoon. Well, it's all kind of scattered about in a mess. We've got our vanilla extract, some pumpkin puree. I probably could use some more of that, but. It we're just not going to do it right now. Uh, I pulled that out of the freezer. We need two cups, but that's about one and a half cups or less. We've got some coconut oil. We've got our baking soda, baking powder, teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of each of those, four teaspoons of pumpkin spice. We've got two cups of sugar, three and a half cups of all-purpose gluten-free baking flour, a one heaping cup of chocolate chunks, four eggs, and we're going to mix it all up. Yummy pumpkin muffin recipe. So first thing we're gonna do is get all of our wet ingredients mixed up in this bowl. I have both a pumpkin muffin and pumpkin bread recipe on my channel. They are made with gluten, but you can easily, or those recipes are, but you can easily swap out the all-purpose gluten-free flour. I'm using the Pamela's brand all-purpose gluten-free flour.
there's only one of these delicious muffins left and I forgot to show you guys what they looked like out of the oven because that was a late night task at bedtime. Anyway, so we had these for breakfast two days in a row and then well pre-breakfast we do muffins and then once I get the kids started with school I make them eggs or whatever else for breakfast. Aaron's got out his meat. We've got deer sausages, top sirloin, and oops, one of the easiest snacks to make, a pantry snack, is this pop popcorn. So I'm gonna make a bunch of it, make a whole bag full in case the power goes out, the kids can have snack. Something to snack on. So we're just going to pop up probably two or three things from our popper into here and season it up. So we like to season our popcorn with some nutritional yeast. There we go. And then we can either dump it into a bowl. Um, the kids will just dish out of here and into a bowl. You can also throw a little bit of Redmond's Real Salt Season Salt on it. Or if you want to, they even make a popcorn salt. So you can even put some of that on it if you Is want to. No, this is like really fine salt. So we just do a little bit of all of them, let it sit for a minute, and we close it up. Oh, uh, dropped one. Voila, popcorn. Next up, we're gonna make the Southern Classic sausage gravy, and we're gonna pour this over some toast. So I just browned the sausage and left all the grease in the pan, and then I'm sprinkling some all-purpose flour on top of that, and we're gonna let this cook for a few minutes, let the flour cook, I'm gonna add a little bit more, and you've gotta cook that flour to get rid of the raw flour taste. If you want your gravy to taste yeah. yummy, just let it cook, and then we're gonna add our milk to it and turn this into a big old pan of gravy for my kids tonight. Maybe you've noticed I've been using my caraway pans quite a bit, but I love the ease of the cleanup. They just rinse out real easily with a little bit of soap and water and you can wipe them dry and put them back on the stove ready for the next meal. There's no scrubbing or anything like that involved and the food doesn't stick, which is a plus for this mama of five. I'm so busy. If I can eliminate some cleanup time in the kitchen, I'm gonna do that. And with my code, Riles underscore rising 10, you're gonna save 10% off of Caraway. Check out the link down below in my video's description for Caraway's non-toxic and non-stick cookware. Why would it not be? He's always there for you. I keep living alone. have an ice storm coming so I'm using up the rest of this bread for French toast and this is a late lunch they had yogurt and fruit a little bit ago um, and some deer meat earlier and muffins so just a quick French toast because they didn't have like a giant lunch so second lunch I guess you could call it and uh, we got a loaf of bread going in the oven that's what all this mess over here is I've been doing half all-purpose flour half bread flour, but I'm probably gonna switch to, because I forgot to grind flour when I did this. And I really should have milled my flour because I'm running out of, running low on all purpose flour and on bread flour. But I did that real quick because it was a time saver because of the ice storm happening outside. We said, Aaron said, you better hurry up and do what you gotta do because we're gonna lose power. So that's what we're doing. All right, kids are having French toast with plum jam. If you haven't already seen it, I made a really good hot cocoa recipe complete with gelatin to make it really, really rich and healthy. And then we also made some homemade marshmallows. So that's what I'm showing you here. All right, friends, this is our ham hock from the pigs that we raised and slaughtered. And I am gonna add this to my instant pot 
and put it in some water and pressure cook it for about 30 minutes. It's frozen solid right now. So I'm gonna pressure cook it and then um, I'm also gonna quick soak some beans. So I'm gonna add some boiling water to some beans while this pressure cooks. And then we're gonna add the beans and the ham hock and we're gonna make beans and ham hock and have some cornbread. We're gonna try this out at 25 minutes pressure cooking. We've got that sealed. I'm gonna fill up my kettle with water so that I can quick soak some beans. Then we're gonna go out to the garage. And we're gonna venture out to the garage and try to find a bucket of beans as best as we can in the shape that I'm in. All right, I got Hagen out here for me. All right, All right Hagen, oh no. Have I not taken them out of the bag yet? Uh, what have we done? Oh, I do. I have an open right here. Okay. So I've got them in their original bag. And then we're going to do a little bit more than two cups of beans because we got a big family. And then anything extra we can freeze or can. So we got about uh, nearly three cups of beans that we're going to into the house and we're gonna make some pinto beans and ham hock. All right, let's go ahead. We're gonna rinse and sort these beans and if you guys wanna look up how to can beans, I will link a canned bean recipe, like the easiest way to can beans. I'll link that recipe down below. We're just gonna rinse these, make sure there's no rocks in there and then we're gonna pour boiling water over them and do a quick soak. I have some hatch chilies somewhere I'm gonna find. This says green bell pepper. I thought it was the hatch chilies, but I'm gonna add some hatch chilies to these pinto beans as well, but not yet. I'm gonna add them when they slow cook. But for right now, we're just gonna add some boiling water to the beans and let them soak until that's done pressure cooking. And this should be ready. It's noon now, so we're gonna make lunch. And over here, lunch is gonna be simple. I need to bake another loaf of bread. It's been like a daily thing here, baking bread. So I'm gonna actually fill up my jars and mill some fresh wheat, get a loaf of bread going. Slice this up thin enough so all five kids can have a peanut butter jelly or sun butter jelly. Um, we've got enough of this to get us through the pantry challenge. If we make the kids a sandwich every single day, then that takes care of one meal. So if you don't see me serve a lot of lunch for the kids, it's because we're doing peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch, unless we do soup or something else. And then Hagen and Torsten, we still have some cucumbers. So they're cutting up some cucumbers. Okay, so I've decided I'm not gonna go on a wild goose chase for the hatch chilies and now I can't find them. So I know they're in a container somewhere. I'm just not gonna dig for them. So we're gonna use these in here and then I'm gonna save my freeze dried onions. I'm only gonna use half of a fresh onion and I'll use this tomorrow for something else, maybe soup. Um, but we're gonna stretch it. I'm gonna drain these and then our ham hock is actually looking really awesome right now. So we're going to add everything in there. It looks like they cut, they cut the ham hock. It's got bones in it. So I'm going to try to pull that out and get the bones and stuff off. Drain these, throw those in there and see where we're at. This looks amazing. So I'm going to pull this out and try to get the bones out of it at least. Okay. So what is in there now is really, really salty, salty water. But I'm going to go ahead and add in my onions and garlic. Some people soak their ham hocks, but I didn't. I just went ahead and cooked it. It's gonna be salty, but the beans are gonna need salt. I don't need to add any salt to this. Hopefully it's not too terribly salty. I'm gonna add these chilies and the beans. And we're also gonna add water. Just on slow cook, four hours. Leave the vent open. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad I did this. I also have all this meat, these bones right here, but this is, oh, steam, sorry. Steamed up my camera. This is a tasty, tasty, tasty meal, and I'm excited. This is gonna be so good with some fresh milled homemade cornbread, and I am gonna start making that now. So I just got out this meat to cool off. I'm gonna pull all the meat off all the bones and throw it back in here, but I'm gonna start this cornbread 
Um, it is 3.27, so we'll eat around 4.35 o'clock, which works perfect for us. And have a nice nourishing meal. Get yourself some ham hocks from your local farmer. So much flavor, so much goodness. And we actually, raising these pigs was pretty easy. We just fed them every day. They were super healthy. And we have a few ham hocks left. I think we might have one or two more. I'm not sure. But we only have one little pack of bacon and then this last little bit of ham from those pigs. So I'm sad to see this come to an end. We definitely need to get some more pigs. But we got all of this pork off of that ham hock. There's a bunch in there. And I just kind of shredded it up and broke it up with a knife um, just into smaller pieces. So to be sure that everybody gets some ham in their beans. I may or may not eat this. I haven't decided yet. My stomach's been really bad today as far as pancreatitis goes. Um, I'm upright on my feet now, but earlier I was not. And I have so much inflammation in my pancreas right now that this is probably a no-go meal for me. I'll eat a few beans. I've tasted it, but I'm not going to have a huge bowl of it. And I won't have the cornbread either. Um, because I had a muffin this morning and that's what caused my pancreas to flare. So I'm not sure tonight. I might just have some chicken broth um, and just kind of fast and let my pancreas heal. But this is amazing and I'll freeze some of this for myself. So when my stomach is feeling better, I can eat some of this. So any leftovers, I'll just put in some quart Ziploc bags and pop in the freezer. All right, friends, we're gonna make cornbread and I believe this is the cornbread recipe from Felicia over at Grains and Grit. She's got lots of awesome fresh milled wheat recipes. So today we're gonna make that recipe and I've got a lot of stuff going on here. I'm looking for my other measuring cup. We need one cup of cornmeal. So we're gonna do three quarters cup. of cornmeal and then I'm gonna do about a cup, a full cup of soft white wheat berries. We'll call that a cup. All right and then we're gonna add both of these to our grain mill and get it going and I'm gonna make it a little more coarse than fine. So not the finest setting but like five clicks up from that. <laughs>
very, 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 very hot. Very hot. Very hot. Why does it doesn't it doesn't mock you me, but it doesn't mock beautiful, but does. Why do you make trumpet and puppies? One of our favorite wintertime breakfasts is oatmeal. So I'm gonna make up a big pot of oatmeal for the kids. And this time I'm putting in raisins, Redmond's Real Salt. We're gonna add some, a little bit of sugar. You can do honey or maple syrup, whatever you have available. We have an abundance of organic cane sugar. And then I'm also gonna do two bananas chopped up in here and a little bit of cinnamon. I actually didn't plan very well and I didn't do any major restocking before this pantry challenge and I am running out of cinnamon. And we use a lot of it. So I'm gonna use a sparing amount just to stretch it. And we're also gonna have some of our homemade hot cocoa mix. And I like making it in this teapot. That way I can serve all the kids at once. Makes my life a little bit easier. blasting but it's amazing to have the internet where we can connect with people all over the world and develop such strong relationships with people so Casey's one of those people and she's a dear sweet friend of mine she got me a lymphatic drainage tool thank you yeah. Casey so it reduces stress promotes blood circulation helps to drain toxins helps to reduce the appearance of cellulite so you can take this and like scrape it on your leg um, but there's so many different ways to use it and then on the back it shows the different ways that you sweep and you always want to sweep towards your heart so that your blood is moving the lymph system out and you're circulating all of the toxins because your lymphatic system it takes away all the bacteria viruses toxins all the dead cells all the things that are being turned over in your body your lymphatic system drains out of your body but if it's not able to drain 
then that's where you get like sickness and disease and all that kind of stuff, infections and all that. So morning and night for optimal results. Thank you, Casey. I'm excited to use this. I've got some really stubborn lymph nodes. So my immune system's been fighting for a long time and I'm doing whatever I can to kind of aid the fight against autoimmune disease. So th thank you, Casey. This is going to help. This is Therawell lymphatic drainage tool. It's 100% natural wood, body contouring. So you can even get this part and scrape in your armpits. So really awesome thing. Thank you, Casey. It's another loaf of homemade bread, the filler. And we're going to slice this up for the kids this morning and they are going to have some eggs and bread. I was gonna make peanut butter and jelly, but the bread was still too warm and it fell apart when I was cutting it. So I decided to make eggs and bread instead. So that's what they're having for lunch. Eggs and bread, eggs and bread. All right, friends, tonight's dinner is quick and easy. I'm gonna show you what I made. Oops. When I say quick and easy, it was really quick and easy. I just heated up some rice, butter, broth, all the good stuff on some basmati rice. And then we've got our leftover beans from last night. They don't look appetizing, but they're amazing, so this is a quick and easy dinner tonight. We're good to go. I've only got three of the kids home with me this morning, so they're having, we found some yogurt sticks in the freezer and we found three waffles in the freezer. So they're gonna have those waffles and the yogurt stick and then I'm coming back here, in here to the kitchen <laughs> and second breakfast, because Hagen and Riker are coming home, so I've got some spinach thawing out we're gonna make a quiche with this spinach with our freeze-dried eggs. If you have freeze-dried eggs, a great way to use them up is to make a quiche. So we're gonna make that. I'm gonna make a couple of them. I have a lot more freeze-dried eggs than that. So I'm gonna make two, maybe four. I don't know if I have enough pie pans. I might just make two. I think this is enough spinach to make two. So I'm gonna start with that. I have more spinach out in the garage. So we'll go ahead and make up two quiches. That way we can have one for tomorrow and maybe the next day. So this is gonna be pretty simple to do. I, it's one to one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in all these eggs right here. And then I'm gonna add some water, about the same amount, probably a little less because I'm not gonna drain out my spinach. So I'll just put a little bit of water in here to try to I'm just gonna let these eggs soak, but I'm gonna dump my spinach on top. I took a moment and I just added some Redmond's Real Salt, some fresh ground pepper, and then I'm gonna put the rest of this bag in here. So we're just gonna let that sit there and thaw, and then we're gonna add our cheese and get everything mixed up and throw it into to the oven. All right, so we've got our eggs fully whatevered. We're gonna add some milk. I'm gonna add about a cup, cup and a half of milk, maybe a little more than that to this. We're going to add our cheese. I need to look up online how to bake this quiche. And then I have some easy or pre-made pie crust that I bought over the holidays that I need to use in my refrigerator. So we're going to get those out and we're going to make it easy. So grateful for modern conveniences like pre-prepared food, like these pie crusts. I don't always buy pre-packaged or pre-made food, but I did buy these over the holiday and this is making my life so much easier right now. My plan was to use these over the holidays to make pies and we just didn't. I was really sick with my stomach and I was just trying to survive. The holidays, we're able to use those pie crusts now when I'm feeling under the weather again. And so I'm adding two cups of cheese to our mixture of that one package of spinach. We did about 12 eggs this was in that mason jar. Nearly two cups of milk. We're mixing it all up. We're gonna pop these in a preheated 375 degree oven. And we're gonna bake these for 30 minutes. And that was the perfect amount of time for my oven for these to bake. It does recommend 35 to 40 minutes, so you may or may not need more or less time than that. The 
the cheese and spinach quiches turned out really good. And so we've already, the kids already had a pretty simple breakfast this morning. I'm not sure if I'll save these for lunch. It's 1030 now, or if these will be breakfast for the next two days in a row. Either way, I have pre-made some food and that's one less thing for me to do later on. And these were made with those freeze dried eggs and they worked out really well. Uh, a lot of people have suggested using your freeze dried eggs for quiche. I have scrambled them and used them for quiche and I was not able to tell that they were freeze dried. They taste like normal eggs. That ties up another week of the pantry challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed the recipes I shared with you. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Bye.